My name is Christy Hope. I started bartending at Milk and Honey, um, went on to bartend at Little Branch, um, and then Chad and I started a company called Cups and Buttons in 2006. My name is Richie, and I used to hold the door at Little Branch, and then, and then Joe told me how to make cocktails, and then I worked for Sasha and Honey, and then we opened a place called Dutch Kills. We opened the Tiki Bar on the Lower East Side, but the, we're here to talk about ice today, and I guess the reason why I'm sitting at this table is because we had the bright idea to open up an ice business. Everyone thought he was crazy, but he shipped his first shipment of ice down to uh, Scarlet Fever epidemic in Martinique in, uh, you know, that year, and uh, turned out to be quite profitable. But I usually teach all my bartenders, you know, you're getting that rock to hit top and bottom of the can over and over again, so you're aerating and chilling the entire time without the thing breaking up and turning into a tremendous amount of surface area. On that point, so going into milk and honey, you know, you're looking at an hour, an hour and a half of, of chopping for, for somebody trying to get up to speed, and then for Little Branch, how much chopping two, time? I, I always budget myself two hours. There are bartenders that do it a little bit less. I, I don't like to feel rushed when I do anything, so I, two hours is what I call it. Um, basically, I wanted to carry on in the footsteps of what I learned from my mentors um, during my tenure at, at Little Branch and, and Milk and Honey, and I spent three hours a day um, cutting ice and doing everything that Joseph just described, sometimes three and a half. I was over there, and I was there at Flatiron when they switched from just a regular, you know, commodity ice machine to cold draft. We created the ice program at Dutch Kills, starting with that bar, by default. Um, uh, the bright idea came to me that I would have to procure ice from somewhere else. And that's where I got the idea to do the black ice because it's big, it's beautiful, it's durable, and it does all the things that we've been talking about today. So we, we had to find a solution. So, you know, there, there was no, you know, stepping back for us. We weren't going to downgrade our ice program. And I think uh, in, in the same way that Sasha kind of, you know, brought this, you know, the old cocktail style new again, and, and then ice, you know, like the, you know, from the concept of the, you know, the block they might have had at the juke joint or the ice delivery the tutor might have given you in the old days. You know, that was kind of his concept. And I think, you know, Richie is probably too humble to say it. We definitely have him to thank for kind of taking that next logical step, you know, what I call the no dumb moments I've had in, in the cocktail world. was seemingly simple ideas that Sasha's put forth. You know, it's like you can't believe no one's ever thought of it before. You know, I think we have Richie to thank for that is that you've got the plate and it's, the ice is slowly growing from, from, the, from the bottom of the tank up. And why this is, is unique is, you know, one of the interesting properties about water is pure water is going to freeze before, or first before impure water will. So it's, you're naturally, as the block is growing, forcing any impurities up. This is something that everyone is, is thinking about and considering, and, and hopefully it does become the norm because it will elevate our communal cocktail and collective cocktail game. Um, and, and what we usually start by doing is gauging what kind of cuts you want. So as I said before, measure twice, cut once, really important. Remember that the, the width of the blade is going to take away from the end products. And then scoring, scoring is real important. Take the extra time. Um, if you're using chisels in this instance and you want to sharpen them nicely, double, double it, however you want to sure, do it, you establish a fine line of where you want to cut. Another tool that's real important uh, or that has proved to be real important for us is the common household iron that it's using heat to manipulate frozen water. It's a novel concept and it really works. What ice sculptors do when they're using heat and different temperatures of water is they're usually just reattaching parts that might have fallen off the sculpture or adding to the sculpture. What we can do is achieve seemingly perfect cubes, spears, even spheres. 